Hello, I'm Rebecca Lowington. Welcome to our podcast. Back in 1991, Micron entered the automotive memory market. 30 years later, we're the clear market leader, but we're just getting started as cars evolve from simple transport to supercomputers on wheels. I'm very lucky to have as my guest today, Giorgio Oscuro, who leads our automotive team to help me explore the history and future history of automotive memory and storage technology. Giorgio, thanks very much for joining me. Oh, it's my pleasure. First, tell us a bit about yourself. What's your background and what's your current role? Okay, my background is after my study in electronics, uh, I started to work for a company of a semiconductor, the name it was Stimac Electronics. This uh, company have uh, make uh, in, uh, to a spin off with Intel, uh, n- making a new company named uh, Pneumonics, and after uh, uh, Micron ever acquired uh, Pneumonics, and now uh, I'm working for Micron. I changed three company, but I never changed my desk, continue to do my job. I start to work in uh, automotive, and uh, this is uh, today, I'm, uh, the, I'm leading the automotive worldwide uh, for Micron. What makes automotive different from other use cases from a technology perspective? Automotive need uh, products that are uh, very robust. Quality, reliability is uh, very important in this segment. Uh, and uh, also the environment. The, this device uh, needs to support uh, very high temperature for minus 40 to 100, uh, sometimes 140 degrees also. This is wow. a very tough uh, requirement. Is that, and that's, that's Celsius? Yes. Wow. So let's, let's look back. Um, in 1991, what was state of the art when Micron entered the market? In, two t- in this time, it was many, many years ago, let me rebuild the story. It was very tough to introduce electronics and memory in the car because at the time, the, they say the engine, the noise of the car was the more attraction to sell the cars. But due to the environment to reduce pollution, the car maker started to introduce new powertrain electronics to bar all the, the gasoline. And this is imply products that at the time was EEPROM and the SQLEPROM. That was only a few kilobytes. So let's let's fast forward to 2001. What was happening then? In 2001, uh, let's say this environment of uh, the pollution would become uh, more and more important. Uh, and uh, as you know, we start with uh, to introduce uh, Aero 3, Aero 4, that uh, means uh, number of CO2 that was a lot to emit uh, by the car. So this required more strong powertrain control. And the time was uh, was uh, the memory of um, flash, bus flash that we introduced uh, with uh, the size of about 60 megabit. 60 megabits. So we've gone yes. from kilobits to megabits in 10 yes. years. Yes, yes. That's quite, that's quite a long way. And, and well, tell me more about that device. I, have, I don't know about uh, it's a flash, it's a flash bust uh, where it's a very uh, with the fast execution because in order uh, all this to uh, calculate, uh, let's say, uh, and to give the right instruction to the microcontroller, they needed to elaborate very fast all the sensor and give the right instruction to burn and to reduce the CO2. Right, so the device is getting bigger, they're getting more sophisticated, they're getting getting more performant. And then if you jump forward again to 2011, what's different? In 2011, we needed to remember that in 2009, there was a disaster for the economy where uh, the number of cars sold in the market was very, very low. It was really the crisis. And the car maker invented to, to make it more attractive, the, the car in for electronic inside, having, for example, the navigation system, that is one of the main attractions that induce uh, end user to buy a new car. And this was really a, a, a good strategy. Let me say it this way, because uh, many people was attracted from moving from the noise of the engine to new system in, inside the car. That was very supporting, very nice uh, to have this dashboard with uh, all these instruments inside. Uh, inside. This imply new products that was uh, the EMMC, 
And then we are talking now about two, four, eight gigabyte. Wow. So, so we've gone from, what, from kilobytes to megabytes to gigabytes in 20 years. That's pretty yes, yes, yes. Something now, else. tell me a bit more about what EMMC means. Is EMMC are the a managing end where you, there is a, one microcontroller and typically inside we have two, four or eight uh, NAND standalone that are connected together in order to generate, to have this uh, gigabyte where typically our customer store all the mapping. So you have all the data and uh, depend with the GPS where you are can give the right instruction uh, in order to that you can reach the right direction and uh, you can go where you want. Right. With now, the as, support. As, as an Italian, um, does this shift from the way a car drives and the way a car sounds to the data-driven car, is that is that painful for you personally? Do you miss no, that? No, no, no. No, 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 it was not paid. It was a very, <laughs> this is a, imply a lot of innovation and a lot of, of uh, the same interaction between uh, Micron and uh, our Tire One, where uh, together we have uh, work and understanding what uh, was there needed and how Micron can, uh, can mitigate with a, a good uh, recommendation to fit uh, their needs. So it was really, a very, very uh, good time at the, <laughs> this for me. <laughs> so talking about innovation and uh, something that I will say, another change that happened in these uh, 20 years uh, was the adoption of the memory. At the beginning, uh, our the car maker before to introduce uh, one products needs uh, about uh, four years or, or more. In, after oh, in 2021 uh, was uh, probably three years after was two years. Now they are looking in, in the, the in products that we don't have and they won't have in the, in the car before that other segment use it. So this is what, a really incredible. What is that? What do you think has driven, what do you think has made that happen? What's driven that change? This is driven change because are the requirement. We are looking for more safety in the car. You know, the car is, a, is a, you, you, there are many, Many think that, uh, that you can improve in the car, in particular if you, we think about uh, the mortality that we have every year, that there is a, about 1.3 million people that uh, pass away for accident, uh, and more than 90% of, of it depend of human error. But uh, we, can, we can improve this, having in the car a system like uh, ADAX that uh, can support the driver in order to mitigate this. Uh, this implies a lot of memory. And this is why we are happy to be a Micron employee that we can, we can be a very good contributor in this, in this part. This excites me and all the team. Excellent. So let's talk about now. Uh, what's, what characterizes the cars of today and the memory of today that goes into those? But today, uh, due to the fact that I'm, I'm saying you that uh, the return in the car is in increasing. And if we think about uh, what was the cost of 20 years ago of electronic by today, uh, is a huge, huge change. In the car now we can have uh, probably thousand dollars or more, depending how, how, how much you want to spend for electronics in the, in the car. There are many systems that are, uh, are in the car that are supporting, let's say the driver, and this is uh, imply a lot, a lot of electronics. Now, if we can say that uh, there are uh, car is full of the uh, RAM, we have uh, we need a lot of execu fast execution in the car because if uh, the car the, the machine have to understand and uh, to react uh, in for uh, taking some decision, you need to, to elaborate this very very fast. So bandwidth is uh, is increasing year by year. Today we are talking about a gigabyte of bandwidth. So we don't have this cap capability. We are thinking also what will be the next. Uh, technology that can fit and uh, can better cover this, uh, this requirement. There are, uh, there are uh, let's say, cars can talk to, together. There is a, there, the, also the, the car will change the infrastructure the, across the world. 
car, we know that the car can move from, from petrol to electrification or other solution that people think about like the hydrogen car, blah, blah, blah. So there are many things that uh, can happen in the car in the next future. And this is, uh, of course, uh, is innovation. We need to be, it is a lot of attraction uh, and I'm very happy about this. Excellent. Now tell me, one thing you, we talked about when we spoke before is that the, 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 the computing systems of the car are becoming more centralized. So instead of, you know, a system out here, a system here, they can more centralized. Can you say a bit about that? Okay, this is, uh, today we are not in this stage, but there is a many company that are working to have this uh, kind of centralization, because today, typically for each application, we have the microcontroller, we have a dedicated memory that support uh, this kind of s system. But of course, due to the fact that uh, in one car, like if I say an example, uh, one Mercedes uh, S-Class, you can have more than 100 of these microcontroller inside, and you can understand what is the implication and the, 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 <laughs> that you have. And they want to combine this in one system that is a, this a supercomputer that uh, it will be, of course, a disruption for, for, for today. But this I'm sure that it will happen. And the memory inside, we, we will talk about terabyte. And with the with and the, all the subsystem that before was dedicated infotainment, others instrument, electronic for powertrain for transmission control will be on the same board. That it means that you need high quality, high reliability for this also for this system that managing for in subsystem like infotainment where they say the expectation is little less than other system. That's a very interesting point. So the, 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 the requirements for as close to perfect as possible are for, now extend to every piece of every every piece of memory in the car, not just the, the stage critical pieces. Yes, if I, if I can say something, Rebecca, the only thing that have not changed between these 30 years are the requirements for quality and reliability. When I start the business in auto, they ask me, we want to have this product in auto with zero failure. Now, was talk, you know that we are talking about a few kilobytes. Now that we're talking about terabyte with a very complicated device that we are selling a three bit per cell, stacked 3D dimension and so on, we're talking about terabyte, they are looking to zero. You, you understand the challenge that we have and we, Macro is one of the best company for quality and reliability. This is convincing me that we are the right portfolio. It is the reason why we're number one in this market. Wow, so from kilobytes to terabytes, you've got a billion times more bits, so that, yes. and, but you're not allowed any more failures. Big job. So let's, um, let's look forward again. Um, let's, let's look at a car from 2031. How do you think that's going to be different? 25, we are talking about the future. You know that in the oh, car, yeah. we, are, we are thinking about the, uh, there are various levels of autonomous drive. Now we are, today we are level two, where of course the control is still human control, but we are moving very soon level three, level four, level five. Level five means that is you go inside the car, you say to the car where you want to go and you don't need to put your hand to, to drive the car. This is, we go along. And this, you understand that this is what will be the implication in electronic and in order to be sure that all the subsystem cannot fail and so on. And also the in infrastructure that you need to build up in order that this car can execute this. In 2031, my expectation is the festival looking on the total market that we can grow roughly about eight times what we have today. So this is a, so means is a very attractive for business standpoint. It is the reason why we are number one, but our competitor is not sleeping. We need to continue with the same energy, the same, the same tenacity and quality and the relationship that we have in our customer. This is a, is a key. This is our strength and we need to leverage. We, ne we, we, we never be happy in what we are doing today. We need always to have a team that think on the future how to improve, what we can do better, 
we are not happy in what we are doing. This is uh, what is the approach that uh, in macro we have. I love that approach. So what's made you stay in automotive for all this time? What's kept you here? But I, I think that I, I already answered to you that is that the motivation is to be, because uh, let's say as a, be an engineer, let's say is a very important the innovation. And, uh, I, I, and the innovation is, is a very important because uh, can open your mind, thinking about how you can build up the future. You know, if I make one example, in, uh, if I talk about uh, Leonardo da Vinci 500 years ago, when he designed the helicopter, everybody said, oh, this guy is crazy. Why, why I can, this can fly? I think that we can really in Macron, uh, we have this opportunity to drive the future because uh, having this, uh, we have a so strong, uh, uh, let's say, portfolio where uh, in a so good relationship with uh, our customer, our car maker, our chipset. Uh, so we, the whole ec ecosystem is uh, well controlled and uh, there is a so wonderful uh, uh, cooperation and trust versus Micron that. Uh, I think that uh, this is a high motivation for everybody to continue to work uh, for automotive. And uh, my dream is that uh, Micron continue to be number one. Uh, and I'm sure the future in automotive for Micron will be more robust and more robust in the in next uh, year. In next year. I hope so too. <laughs> so we didn't talk a lot actually about how, about how it's different how, it's, how the customer partnerships differ in automotive. Can you say a bit about that? Okay, customer is uh, very important because I, I told you that we are moving, uh, we are moving in during these uh, 30 years from uh, few kilobyte to terabyte uh, with a very complicated, uh, complex technology and so on. Uh, and uh, working with the customer, understanding what is uh, the usage model, the, uh, uh, giving it to our customer recommendation. We have, for example, dedicated labs where our customer can, can use it in order when they build up a new, a new board, we can analyze and we can, today, to give an example, we, during this analysis, we find out, uh, let's say, 20% issue, but also we have more than 50% where we can give a recommendation to our customer. That means that they can fix it, they can find, they can use their, their board in the proper way where robustness and quality and reliability is better. In, in my philosophy, that is the macro philosophy, I'm happy when the customer of my customer is happy because we need to work together. And this is the right approach to reach zero failure. Excellent. Thank you. That's that's a really, really good point. So does what we do in automotive, does it benefit other things that Micron makes for other markets? Okay. Automotive, I think, is a, is a segment where I consider personally, but this is the voice of my customer, that is uh, we are injecting in, across the Micron culture. What I mean? I mean so that automotive requires very, very tough requirement in terms of quality and reliability, where you need to really to be in continuous improvement. You need to have a right process. Sometimes you need to change management to have to, have, to have a different approach. And if, to give an example, out in Micron, we have a we are now out of spice level three for software standpoint. And this is beneficial, not only automotive, beneficial all other segment because when you are able to build up a product since the beginning with a non failure and having this kind of approach, this is the right methodology for screening to be sure that you can work in shift left to have all the failure inside and to not use our customer as our debugger. Sure, this is a strength. And this is beneficial for everybody, like ISOTS, for example. Excellent. I'm very pleased to hear it. Brilliant. All right. Well, Giorgio, thank you so much for joining me. This has been most entertaining and fascinating. Thank you again. Okay. You are welcome. It was my pleasure again. Mm -hmm.